so this is, in your head you must think this is background information. All right, so we are busy just doing small calculations to calculate mole. The question here is determine the volume of 8 gram of oxygen gas at STP. Now STP, just a refresher, stands for standard temperature and pressure, which is 0 degrees Celsius and 101.3 kilopascal. So standard temperature and pressure, 0 degrees Celsius and 101.3 kilopascal. And if they say that, it, you smile, because it means that you are allowed to use the volume for a molar mass is 22.4. So it means the volume is constant. Okay. So that is why they tell you that. They give you the mass is 8 grams. They give you um, oxygen. And the molar mass for oxygen is 32. And then they ask to determine the volume. Okay. So if you go to the formula that has volume in it, it is this formula. Okay. So if we check, this is a constant given. We want the volume, so we need the mole. They didn't give us the mole, they gave us the mass, and we could have calculated molar mass. Okay, so with the help of the mass and the molar mass, we are going to go calculate mole, and then we can calculate volume. So this will be two calculations. So it will count about four marks, this question. Okay, so mole is mass over molar mass. The mass is 8, the molar mass is 32, and that gives you 0 0.25 mole. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, now that we have the mole, we're going to calculate the volume. So the mole is 0 0.25. The volume we want to get, the molar volume is 22.4, that constant. Now remember, you want to get rid of the thing at the bottom, so you have to go up and you have to multiply it. And yes, Kumo, what is that? Five point six what? Volume. D M cubed decimeters cubed. Remember, decimeters cubed is the same as liters. Centimeters cubed is the same as milliliters. Any question there? Oh, three, two. Are you done? Good. All right. Now we've done concentration before. Okay, we did it in the previous chapter. You remember concentration? Yes, we had a lot of homework or work on that. This is exactly the same page, exactly the same question. Because in grade 10, you wouldn't have done concentration. Okay? So I'm going to skip this page because we have done this just in the previous chapter. Okay, so I'm going to skip page 5, so it's not like you shouldn't know it. You should know it. We just, we've done it. Okay? Right, then we're going to go to the empirical formula. Empirical formula. Okay, I'm going to read and then explain it. It says there, the empirical formula gives you the simplest ratio in which elements of, um, of a compound are combined with each other. Okay, so it gives you the simplest ratio. If we look in this class, we have a total of the men in this class is three. The women in this class is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine women. Young women. Should be ten. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, three men and nine young women. So we can say the ratio for, for women to men, so men to women or women to men, is 3 to 9. Or what, uh, another way that we can say it is, instead of saying 3 to 9, we can say it's what to what? 
one to three, meaning for every young man there is three young women in this class. Okay, so you get the idea of simplest ratio. Okay, so that is called the empirical formula. Is, was that a knock? said that is the simplest ratio in which elements combine with one another now before i can go on i want to quickly just look at what is a molecular formula okay molecular formula is the actual formula so we would have said here at the top men is three women is nine okay that would have been our molecular formula Okay, how much we actually have. And then we would have said, okay, but the ratio is men is one, women is three, and that would have been our empirical formula. Okay, so you get the idea. Molecular formula is what it actually is. Empirical formula is um, the simplest ratio in which they would have combined with one another. Okay, so it says there, the empirical formula is a multiple of the imp uh, um, empirical formula. The molecular formula, sorry, is a multiple of the empirical formula. So if we look at mercury chloride, this is the actual formula. If you read the bottle, if you find the compound, this is what it would look like. But you can see there's a 2 and the 2, so you can divide by 2. So the empirical formula is just the simplest ratio, 1 to 1. Hydrogen peroxide... Is this is the actual formula, and if you divide by two, you get that. That is the empirical formula. Um, hydrogen peroxide's other name is just peroxide. Where do we use peroxide in everyday life? Two things. I don't think any one of you have used it currently. I definitely use it. Yes, it's not actually, it's, we call it a dye, but it's not actually a dye. It's a compound that eats away the color of your hair. So then I become blonde. So I'm actually killing my hair when I dye blonde. It's very bad for you. Um, but also, you, we use it to clean wounds. Peroxide, they use it in the hospital to clean wounds. Okay. Right, and then the last one I want to look at there is water. You can see that is the molecular formula for water. You can't um, make that any simpler. We can't say, okay, let's divide by two, then we have H, O, a half. We can't do that, right? So the molecular formula is just the empirical formula. So sometimes they're the same thing, and sometimes you can simplify it. All right, now we have to go determine that. There is the way we determine it, the method. I'm not going to go through the method now step by step. I'm going to apply it with you because I know when I read stuff, you don't listen. Okay. All right. So they say they find the empirical formula for compound having the following percentage composition. Okay. So if we add these percentages together, you should have, or you should, you're supposed to get 100. So what we do is we say, let's pretend that this is not 100%. But out of 100 grams. Okay, so we play pretend. So instead of writing percentages, we are going to write the mass. And you are just going to copy those values in there. Okay. Now sometimes, 
they will already give it to you in grams. One of the questions for homework is already in grams. Okay, then you don't have to somehow go take it to a percentage and then take it to 100, you know, you just fill in the, that mass in there. Then, this table here, you don't have to use this table. This is just a table so that it's easier for me, everything is together. But in a test, you can do it underneath each other, just the way you want to do it, as long as everything that comes marks, that that is there. Okay, you can draw a table, but you don't have to. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to determine the moles. So the first thing that counts marks is the formula here, that formula. You get a mark for writing down the formula. You don't have to write it down three times or four times. You can only write it once and then use it. Okay, so for moles, you take the mass divided by the molar mass. And um, where are we with our questions? Princess. What is the, no, first tell me what is this one's name, and then tell me what is its molar mass, and then the answer. Potassium. Yes, and potassium's molar mass. Everyone take out your calculator. Yes, it is 39, and if you calculate that, then Jabu, the next one, what is carbon? <laughs> okay, what is carbon's molar mass? Okay, and you're going to calculate that one for us. And then to Wana, what is the last one? And what is the name? Okay, and you're going to calculate that one. Are you ready, princess? What is it? Okay, now... This is not your final answer, so don't round off just yet. You want to uh, uh, say as many decimals as you can. Yes, princess, what's the rest? 1,4. Just press answer equals. Hi. Let's say again, 1.44. Well, okay, I'm going to stop there at the one. Here's Jabu. What's the next one? Are you ready, Dolwana? Yes, sir. Okay, and Dolwana? Okay, right. So, you, you, like I said, you don't want to round off as far as possible. Now, we want to get the simplest ratio. We want to get the empirical formula. Like we did at the top here, how did we go from 3 to 9 to 1, point th uh, 1 to 3? We said we're going to take the smallest one. We're going to take 3 and divide both by 3, right? So, we took the smallest one and we divide by, um, both of them by that. The same thing here. You're going to take the smallest one and you're going to divide all of them by the smallest one. Okay, now I'm going to show this once, but you don't have to show the step. You just have to do the step. But I'm just going to do this once. Okay, so, with this second last one, you do not round off, okay? So, second last one, you do not round off, but for the last one, you round off to nearest whole number.
Okay, I'm doing it. Are you busy calculating the first one? Oh my word. Call me so. And Declan, the next one, and Buki, the last one. Yes, you get two. Declan? One. Yes. Did that happen at rugby yesterday? Uh, no, it was on Saturday. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last one, Bookie? Uh, three. three. Okay, so that is the simplest ratio. So we get potassium, we have two of that. Carbon, one, and oxygen, three. So we're going to write K2CO3. Tiamo, what is that compound's name? Carbonate. Yes? Potassium yes, potassium carbonate. All right, let's look at the next one. Now it says find the molecular formula. For the compound, if the percentage composition is as follows and the molar mass is that. So now they don't ask to calculate the empirical one, they ask the molecular one. But they, you need to calculate the empirical formula first before you can get to the molecular formula. Okay, so I'm going to show you how. Again, they give you the percentages there. So you fill in 40, 6.7, 53.3. Then we calculate the number of moles. Remember, you get a mark for writing down the formula. So you need to show that. 40 divided by 12, 6.7 divided by 1, divided by 16. We'll see the first one. Okay. But I hope you didn't type in the next one. 6.7 divided by 1? Good. Uh, Bongani, the next one. Mm -mm. 53.3 divided by 16. 3.331. Hello? One, two, five. Yeah. All right. So you see they're more or less the same. Okay. Which one is the smallest one? It's this one. Okay. But when you're going to divide, you're going to round off to the closest whole number. So you're going to get this one to be one, this one to be two, and this one to be one. Okay. Why? Because if you take your calculator, take that, divide it by that. Because you're going to divide everyone with the smallest one, eh? which is that one. Then you're going to get, for this one, you're going to get 1.00 something something. What do you get, Leo? Okay? Did you type that in? Something, something, something. So if you round that off to the closest whole number, you get one. Okay. So that means that the empirical formula is CH2O. Okay. That is what they give us there, or what we got. But they asked for the molecular formula, not the empirical formula, the molecular formula. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go get the molar mass for that. So that's 12 plus 2 times 1 plus 16. And if you calculate that, Mama, what do you get? 30. You get? 30. Yes, 30. 
So that is the molar mass of the empirical formula. But they want the molecular formula, and they say the molecular formula's mass is 60. Okay? So what we're going to do, and you're going to draw in another line there. Okay, and another one if you need a space between them. You're going to say the molecular formula divided by the empirical formula. The masses. Okay, so you're going to say 60 divided by 30. And that obviously gives you what, Kumo? Two. So that means that the molecular formula is twice the empirical formula. Okay, how did I get to that? I took the empirical formula up there and you multiply. So the molecular formula is twice the empirical formula, meaning that you're going to take for the molecular formula, you're going to take this and you're going to multiply it by 2. So you have C2H4O2. So I took this there and I multiplied by 2. Sharp, sharp. Yes. Good. All right. <clears throat> did we do... I don't think I did this last year with you, did I? No. no. Okay. Then also still grade 10 work. Okay. Is the start of balanced equations. Now this is... I want to say the most important part for preparation for grade 11. Okay? If you, today is a, a cold day, they say it might snow this weekend. Okay, so we are preparing for the cold to come. Not snow in Free State, like snow in the mountains and so forth, so meaning it's winter is coming. Okay. Right, now when, you don't have to write this down if you don't want to, when we, um, let's say winter is here and you want to bake pancakes at home, okay? If you bake, you know, I want to do pasta because it's easier. For pasta, you need, for every one egg, you need one cup of flour, okay? And that gives you two cups of pasta, Okay, so that is your recipe. Did you know that if you make pa pasta from scratch? Like pasta. Like the noodles? Yes. If you make it from scratch, when you come visit me, we'll make it from scratch. You take your egg and your flour and you mix, 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 and then it becomes a dough. And you boil it and it's pasta. Promise, promise. All right, so that there we call our recipe, right? Does that mean you already have two cups of pasta? No. 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 Does it mean you have an egg? No. no. You just open your recipe book and it says that. Okay. Now you look in your cupboard and you say, right, we have, I don't know where you keep your eggs in the fridge, it lasts longer. But let's say you see you have four eggs and you see you have three cups of flour and obviously you have zero pasta to start with. Because you just look at the fridge and the cupboard and that's what you have. All right. Can I just add all the eggs together and all the flowers together? No. No. You, will, you have to follow the recipe. Okay. So, um, where are, am I with my questions? Princess, tell me how many eggs and how much flour will you use for, uh, if you have to follow that recipe? Yes. <laughs> You're asking what? <coughs> yes, that's what you have in your cupboard. That is the recipe. How much of this will you use to get the maximum amount of pasta? Okay, no, but you want to. You don't want to just get two cups of pasta. You want to get the most possible. Okay, right, so she said, if the ratio is one to one, 
then I have to see if this is 4, then this has to be 4. But this, I don't have 4. Okay? So if this is 3, then I'm going to use 3 of this as well. Okay? So you're going to say, right, then I'm going to use 3 of this, I'm going to use 3 of this. Okay? How much pasta will I gain? The ratio is 1 to 2. So if I use 3, I'm going to gain 6. So at the end here, I have one egg left, I have zero flour left, and I have six cups of pasta. All right. Does that make sense what I did there? Okay. Now, the same thing in science. If we, and next year we're going to do um, practicals where we're going to throw chemicals together. I can't just throw stuff together without a recipe. There might be a bomb, or I might waste stuff, or the experiment might go nowhere because of the ratio is wrong. Okay, so we use, and we call it, balanced chemical equations to help us. Okay, so there we have a chemical equation as an example. Here we have nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. We add together to get ammonia. This process is called the Haber process that you're going to learn about next year. The Haber process. Because in the Haber process, it produces ammonia. And ammonia we use for fertilizers. What is a fertilizer? For the plants and the grass and the crop and the whatever. We use it because um, people get too many babies in this world. But our world is slowly running out of food. getting more expensive so they have to use fertilizers <laughs> all right okay so um so that's a balanced equation i also have it here in pictures for you you can see ammonia the diatomic molecule hydrogen the diatomic molecule and then it gives you two ammonia molecules okay so that there gives you the recipe so you'll see i call this balanced equation the recipe because it gives you the mole ratio Okay, so the two parts that we are going to use a lot is the mole ratio and the recipe. You see, I always write them underneath each other. Okay, now if you have extra classes at another place, do you guys go to the extra classes at other schools? Yes. Really? But what school? Uh. All right, okay, good. So if you go there, then um, they might use another method that, uh, that I use. And it's fine. The method is not wrong. My method is not wrong. It's just different methods. Okay. I just stick to one method because I don't want to confuse you. Okay. So I will always use the mole ratio. But you guys, so where do I get the mole ratio from? From here. One, two, three, two, two. Okay. But you can also use the mass ratio. For the mass ratio, they use the molar mass. Okay, so if we look there, nitrogen, the molar mass is 14, but there's two of them, and that's how they got to 28. Okay, hydrogen is 1, times 2 gives you 2, times 3 gives you 6, that's how they get to 6. Okay, the same thing here. So this mass ratio is just the molar mass ratio, or you can use the gas volume, okay, we will use that VM, that is 22.4. So if the mole is 1, it's 1 times 22.4. Okay? And this one here will be 3 times 22.4 and 2 times 22.4. Okay, so that's how they got to the mass, uh, the volume ratio. But you'll see we don't use it that often because for the a gas volume ratio, it has to be gases, all of them. And you have to be at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, so you can just write here a note for yourself to use this one. You have to use a gas and the same temperature and pressure. All right, then the next definition that you must know there is called a stoichiometric reaction. Okay, just say that out loud with me. Stoichiometric. All right. Stoichiometric reaction. Stoichiometric. Okay, now, what is a stoichiometric reaction? 
It's a chemical reaction where all the reagents are completely changed into the products. It just means where we use everything. Okay, now this was still part of grade 10 work where we did lose everything. We're going to get to a part in grade 11 where we have some stuff left over. Okay, but if we use all of the reagents, and remember the reagents are the things on the left hand side of the arrow. If you use all of that, then it's called a stoichiometric reaction. Okay, now they say according to that reaction there at the top, so I'm just going to write this down again. What was this? Three hydrogens gives you two ammonia. Okay. Just gonna write that down again. They said in that reaction, how many moles of ammonia will form if you have six moles of nitrogen that reacts with an excess hydrogen? Okay, now I quickly want to describe uh, explain that word. If they say excess hydrogen, it means there's too much of that. Okay, it means like in the example I did just now. That, like the eggs, you had too much. Okay, so when I asked Princess, how many will we use? She said three. Because she said, this is too much. This one, we have just enough of. So this one will determine how much I will use and how much I will fall. Okay, so that one that we have just enough of, we call that, and in this one it will be nitrogen, we call that one the limiting reagent. The limiting reagent, because the limiting reagent, and I'm going to, that one there determines the number of products. Okay, so the limiting reagent determines the number of products, but I'm going to explain that again a bit later on. Okay, so they say this one we have too much of. This one is our limiting reagent. So nitrogen will determine how many or how much ammonia will be produced. Okay, so according to my balance equation, one mole of ammonia will give you two moles of What did I say? One mole of nitrogen will give you two moles of ammonia. Okay, that is according to my recipe. But how much um, nitrogen did I have? I have six moles. Okay, so you're going to say, right, so six moles of nitrogen will give me what? Twelve. So you see, from there to there, what did I do? I multiplied with two. So I'm going to do the same, so I get 12 moles of ammonia. Okay. Peter ask, what is the actual volume of hydrogen at STP required? Okay, and if you read STP, you smile. Because you're allowed to use that VN. STP required for this reaction to take place. Okay, so we saw that for one mole of nitrogen, we need three moles of hydrogen. Okay, so because they're, they're asking about hydrogen, and we know how much nitrogen we have. Okay, so we are going to say one mole of nitrogen requires three moles of hydrogen. But I don't have one mole, I have six moles of nitrogen. We'll need how many moles of hydrogen? Okay, so you're going to multiply by three, so you get 18 moles of hydrogen. So you see, I always start with my moles, my mole ratio, my recipe. And now they ask, okay, they didn't ask the moles of hydrogen, they ask the volume of hydrogen. So I have to go from moles to volume, and we're going to use this formula where we say mole is volume over volume at STP. Okay. 
Okay, the mole is 18. We want the volume that is 22.4. And if you go calculate that, you get it to be what job? And the unit? Two, comma two four. Two and the unit? Decimeters cubed. Right, are you still with me? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we're still building. We're not where we want to be yet. Okay. It says there, Determine the mass of oxygen liberated. What does liberated mean? Given off. Okay. Oxygen liberated weighing 29.4 grams of potassium chlorate. Eight, a lot of oxygen, is heated. So there under the arrow, you can write the triangle. The triangle means heat. The triangle means heat up. And decompose, decompose means to split apart. Decompose completely according to the following balanced equation. Okay, now, just like I did on the previous page, we were, I'm going to compare the moles. We're going to do now, but we're going to do it with the help of an aid that you have to use this year and definitely next year in a very difficult chapter. Okay, so you're going to learn this aid, this method that I'm going to use. I call this the mole table. Okay, and in the mole table, you are only allowed to use mole. Okay, right, so your mole table looks like this. You start with your balanced equation. So you have two potassium chlorates gives you two potassium chlorides and three oxygens. Okay, so you just rewrite your formula. Then underneath, you are going to write your mole ratio. So you have 2 to 2 gives me 3. 2 to 2 gives me 3. So that you get from your balanced equation. And you're going to see I highlight that a different color to remind myself that that is just my recipe. I do not have 2 mole and 2 and 3 to start with. That is just my recipe. It's not what I have. That is, we call it theoretical. Okay. Then, under that, you're going to have your beginning values. So, B stands for beginning. Then, you're going to have, and I write there, a triangle. Because the triangle is what the change in or what you use and what you gain And then we're going to have an E. And the E stands for what you have at the end. Okay. I'm going to put in my arrows there. And now I'm going to start filling in values. Now, this thing is called the mole table. So you're only allowed to use moles. Not mass, not volume, not concentration, nothing. Moles. Okay. Right. Now, they say to determine the mass liberated when you have so much potassium chloride. That is mass. That is how much you have there. But I want to convert that into moles first. Okay. So here, um, you can do it on the right-hand side or at the bottom. It doesn't matter. I'm going to first go calculate my moles. 
Okay, so the mass is 29.4. Um, Tawana, are you busy with the molar mass there? So potassium chlorate. The rest of you, are you checking? Forty five point five. Is she correct? Did you check her? Do you trust the water? Yes. Never. Um, I get 122.5. What did you type in? Uh, Why do you say times two? No, 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 no. So that two means two times everything. But I don't want for molar mass. I just look at that. I don't look at the mole ratio. You said you trust her. Yes. You all fail. <laughs> no, they didn't. All right, so I'm just going to show this again. Here at the bottom, the molar mass for potassium chlorate. How do we get to that? It is 39 plus 35.5 plus 3 times 16, and that gives you 122.5. So you don't multiply the two. You don't multiply the mole ratio. You only take the formula. Okay, so that's 122.5. And underneath, if you calculate the mole, what do you get? Zero point two four. Okay, so that mole that you just calculated is your mole that you have there at the beginning. That zero point two four. Okay, so that mole that you've calculated is the mole that you have at the beginning. They did give you the mass. Okay, but this is called a mole table, so you're not allowed to put in mass there. Now, when we made pasta. Did we have any pasta to start with? No. no. So the thing here at the top will always be zero, zero to start with. Always. Okay, so careful. Understand this well. This is not what you have to start with. That is your recipe that if you use to, then you will get to. But you don't have to. That's just your recipe. Okay? This is what you have actually at the beginning. Nothing. Okay, now they say there that it decomposes completely. Completely means everything, everything is used. So the word completely means everything is used. Finished. Klar. The container is empty. So meaning we have 0 0.24. So I'm going to use all of that. Minus 0 0.24, so that I have zero left at the end. Okay, now I want to know, but how much will form? Okay, I'm doing this slowly. You'll see I go faster and faster as we go on. How do I know how much will form? I'm going to look at the mole ratio. The mole ratio is 2 to 2. 
So two of this will give me two of that. That I get from my recipe. Okay, but I don't have two. I have 0 0.24. So I have 0 0.24. And then you'll see I draw a line and I stop. Okay. So this is 2 to 2, but I don't have 2. I have 0 0.24. How much will form there? 0 0.24. Right? So that is 0 0.24. So I'm going to say plus 0 0.24. Okay, so I had 0 to start with, I added 0 0.24, so I have left 0 0.24. Okay, let's check the next one. I want to see how much of oxygen will be produced. What will I use? I will use this, the potassium chlorate. Okay, so I have two potassium chlorates, gives me three oxygens. So the mole ratio is 2 to 3. Again, I don't have 2, I have 0 0.24. I draw a line, I breathe. How do you go from 2 to 3? Don't tell me you add 1. You can only multiply and divide. You do what? Okay, so what do you do? Get on with my questions. I'm going to go to Declan. So you are always going to say divide by the thing on the left hand side, multiply by the thing on the right hand side. You're going to say divide by 2 times 3. Type in your calculator. Say 2 divided by 2 times 3 gives you what? 3. Okay. And what you do there, you must do there. So you're going to say divide by 2 times 3. Can you do that in your head, Declan? No, you can yeah. Hi. Did you lose your brains when someone hit you? <laughs> Zero one. Hunky boogie. Zero point three six. All right. So, here what you've calculated is you add zero point three six. Okay. So you had zero. You add a 0 0.36, so you have left there 0 0.36. Okay, so you will see later on, later on in grade 11, but especially in grade 12, you are not going to do all of this. Okay? You're going to do that in your head because you've done it so much. You're going to get all your marks just in this table. Up until five marks just in the table. Okay, but for now, we do all of it so we practice. Let's go back to the question. What was the question? The question was, determine the mass of oxygen. Where's oxygen? There's oxygen. You don't have its mass, you have the mole. So now that we have the mole, we are just going to calculate the mass. Okay? So, I'm going to say, let's look at oxygen at the end. Mole is mass over molar mass. I'm just going to zoom in. We determine the mole is 0 0.36. We want the mass. What is the molar mass of oxygen, Boki? But oxygen is a diatomic molecule? 32. Okay, and Tiamo? Yeah, 
Eleven point fifty-two. And the unit? New Year for mass grams. Right, you get it? Yeah, I don't go kill them with this. But obviously, homework. Your homework will be. No, no. No, no. You will calc or determine for homework. Uh, question two, three, four. Six and eight. So two, three, four, six and eight. You can now listen carefully because I wanna. I'm, I'm, I'm going through this quite quickly. You can do question one, but it's so easy that I'm skipping it. You can do question five, but it is. I'll do it with you in class because it's a multiple choice type of question that's a bit weird. Okay, you can do question seven, but we've done that in the previous chapter. Alright, enjoy the rest of your day.